Well, welcome back to The Middle Podcast. My name is Travis Gale, founder of The Middle, and today I'll be speaking into what to do when you feel stuck. This is a very real human experience, and we need to talk into it. Uh, the Middle Podcast was created to encourage and equip people through the middle, which is the territory that we all have to navigate in pursuit of our goals. When we feel stuck, it can derail us, it can bring up very negative emotions, and it can lead to some pretty serious consequences, like depression and anxiety and even severe burnout. So in this episode, I'll lay out a few practical themes that we can explore when we feel stuck, which hopefully will enable you to shift uh, out of that space and uh, maintain momentum towards your goals. So I hope that this podcast adds a lot of value. And if you are in that space, then this really is for you. A reminder that you can listen to the middle podcast on all major platforms. Let's get into it. So lately I've had many conversations with people around the idea of feeling stuck. It's become quite a common term, I feel stuck or I am stuck. And uh, this is a a tough space to be in and it does certainly bring very tough emotions. Uh, One can feel very frustrated, one can feel angry, uh, very dejected. Um, And it certainly can, if it's for an extended period of time, lead to depression and anxiety. Uh, If you missed the last episode that we spoke about with Mads Dazel, we focus a lot on mental health. There's some good tools in there to, to, to listen to. But one of the things that she said, which is really relevant to this podcast, is that a lot of people are exhausted, they're overwhelmed, they're tired. In fact, we are so tired that we are too tired to deal with our tiredness. So feeling stuck is, is, is a part and parcel of that. Um, and if we are exhausted and overwhelmed, then what we tend to do is check out. And even though we need to... Em- embrace the stuckness and deal with the stuckness we just don't have the emotional and mental capacity to do that and so that just means that we could end up on a a bit of a hamster wheel we could end up in a rut and before you know it time goes on and life really looks different to how you wanted it to look and uh, we need to pause and we need to talk about this because what we don't want is we don't want people to feel stuck or to be stuck for a long extended period of time uh, and when we really get into some of the themes today, there are some practical things that you can do to, to deal with um, your sense of stuckness, which is really the intent of the episode this morning. So the first thing is really about shifting the narrative. I think the term I feel stuck uh, is obviously a, a negative term or the idea of I am stuck, and that produces negative emotions. And you'll know that the the first or uh, insight of the middle is really that every start is followed by some form of adversity. Um, and so I think the first thing to really just unpack a little bit is that this idea that our expectations and our reality don't line up is a very natural part of the human experience. It's a very natural part of the human journey. Um, and so when we label ourselves as stuck, if you had to picture, for example, a car stuck in the mud, I think that picture can produce the the wrong narrative in our minds and that's it feels like we're going nowhere it feels like we're achieving nothing and even though it may feel like that if we reframe the narrative and talk about the fact that well we're in a place where things aren't lining up and so we're asking questions or we're curious about what changes need to be made right now in order to shift the way that i feel or i'm in a phase of change um, and that's quite difficult but it's actually in many ways, an opportunity because it might set me up for a whole new season. So there's a different way of of framing this thing. A friend of mine and I were talking about the book, A Beautiful Constraint, and just the term beautiful constraint, it's shifting the narrative around when we feel constrained, well, it's actually an opportunity and it's not a, a negative thing. So you might feel stuck or constrained or just in this in this place of limbo, but because it's very much a natural part of the human experience, it may actually be an opportunity. And if you see it that way, then it shifts your emotional response to the current phase that you're in. And if we can shift our emotional response into more of a positive state, it then gives us the, the emotional capacity to actually deal with where we're at right now. So I, the first thing is really to say to you, you're not stuck. Um, you're just in a phase, in a season, which is a very natural season for most human beings. And I know that it might have been an extended season, it might have been going on for a long period of time, and I know that it's tough, but because it's a natural part of our human experience, it means that you've got what it takes to navigate this and to move out of it. Um, And so you've got to keep going, got to keep engaging, don't check out, 
Um, don't numb your emotions and don't give up just yet. The second thing um, is to look at each of the areas of your life and to just pause and reflect on exactly where you are feeling stuck. Uh, just a note on this, on this idea of pausing. I think the, the reality is, as we say in the middle, we, we have to refuel from our story. Um, so we all have a, a, a sense of purpose, a sense of vision, a sense of values, you know, what's important to us. But no matter how clear those things are, when we're busy and when we're just taking on everyday life, the connection that we have with our story and with those values and our vision and purpose, it starts to fade and it starts to, you know, just become become weaker. And so we've got to intentionally place pauses in our life where we reconnect with our story. So we reconnect with past commitments that we've made, we reconnect with things that are important to us, we reconnect with um, a sense of purpose and, and, and what really brings us meaning in our lives, reconnect with our vision, um, reconnect with things that we've heard in the past that have really been helpful in setting us up for um, what we want to do in the different areas that we are engaged with. Uh, you know, for me, it's about going out to the mountains once every quarter or once every six months, pitching a tent, just getting into the getting onto the trails and, and, and reflecting. And I think that that is something that we as human beings have potentially lost, is the art of disconnecting from our phones, disconnecting from our contexts, and just allowing our perspective to be reformed and reshaped and for us to reconnect with our story. So shifting the narrative is the first thing that we need to do. And the second thing that we need to do is we need to pause and reconnect with our story. Um, because within that, what we might find is that there's a specific area that we feel stuck. The reality is that when we say, I am stuck or I feel stuck, we're, we're often wrapping up all our journeys into that sense of stuckness. But as we say in the middle, life is a series of journeys. So for example, I'm on a parenting journey. I'm on a marriage journey. I'm on an entrepreneurship journey. I'm on a sporting or physical health journey. And those journeys are, are in a way independent journeys, but also intertwined with each other. And so if I'm feeling stuck and I put those down on a piece of paper and say, well, in my parenting journey, things are actually going okay, feeling connected to my children, I feel like I'm doing all right there, marriage, things are going, going well there, going fine there, there's some tweaks that I could make. Uh, in terms of my sporting and physical life, that's, that's really going well right now. It's actually in the area of work where I'm feeling stuck. And, I, and then I can break it down a little bit further. It's to do with a specific task or the specific role or it's to do with um, a specific brand that I've got, you're really trying to move it from this overwhelming sense of stuckness into something specific that you feel stuck in. Because when you can name that thing, then you can deal with it. Um, you know, as Mads says, what we, can, what we can name, we can rule. You know, what we can't name rules us. Um, and often when I'm talking to people about the sense of stuckness, everything's so complex in their heads. Um, that it needs to be brought out onto paper, written down, and we've got to then hone in on the exact area that we need to pay attention to. And then that means that you can say to yourself, well, I don't feel stuck in my parenting, I don't feel stuck in my relationships, I don't feel stuck in my sports or my physical health, but I feel stuck in my career, or I feel stuck in this particular brand that I, I, I lead or in this particular project. And now we can work with that because we've got it down on paper and it's, it's, it's something very narrow that we can then start to, to, to deal with. Now this links right back to the idea of changing the narrative because at times, and I've found this certainly in my life, when I've entered into these tricky stuckness periods, in a way, that negative emotion is a catalyst for you engaging with the specific area that we've now labeled so that you can make the necessary changes that set you up for the next season. If, if the stuckness hadn't arrived, you might have just carried on doing what you're doing and it may not have been what's best for you down the line. So this tricky period of time where there's complexity and uncertainty and the sense of stuckness is in a way an opportunity for you to consider a new way forward and it could release you into a whole new area. So for example, uh, you know, recently I felt a bit stuck um, just with regard to this brand, the middle brand that I work on. And what I had to do is put some stuff down on paper. And when I did, I found that the specific area that I felt stuck in was that I, I didn't feel like I was using my voice enough to communicate to people 
the themes and the ideas and the thoughts that I had running around in my head. And I was looking for something more with regard to the ability to encourage and to enable people beyond, say, the workshops I was doing or the, the keynotes that I was doing. And so in that space, I was feeling a little bit stuck. Like, how do I, how do I express myself more? Um, and so that's where the podcast was born. Uh, actually, I had a look at uh, past uh, journals that I had written around wanting to start a podcast. Um, uh, I reflected on conversations that I had with people that had come up to me and said, hey, you need, a, you need to have a podcast. It's a great way of putting stuff out there. Um, and whether or not it's about, you know, this podcast growing and, and doing well, the fact is, is that choosing to then start and initiate that podcast meant that I was shifting something in the space that I was feeling stuck in. And already just having done two episodes, a powerful conversation with Mads in the last episode and also engaged in a, in a conference with her. Um, so there's a, there's a whole new path that's starting to emerge there. And the first episode with Mlondi and Lovu, we've already done some work together in the corporate space. So there's a whole new path that's opening there. So by identifying the area and making a necessary shift in the specific area already has shifted my trajectory in that space. And so that's really the, the third piece that we've got to do. You know, we've got to change the narrative and then we've got to get the, the actual area that we feel stuck identified. And then we've got to say to ourselves, how do we activate a shift in trajectory, a shift in direction in that space? What do I need to do in that space to move myself out of the current um, scenario that I'm finding myself in? Um, how, am I, how do I actively and intentionally shift what I'm feeling with that specific area um, and that could be anything for you for me it was it was for example starting a podcast you might need to find investment for a project you might need to have a conversation with your boss um, you might need to start that degree that you've been um, procrastinating on or you might even need to sit down with a mentor and just talk about that specific space but the point is is that we we can't control the environment we can't control what happens to us we can only control our next step and as Matt said sometimes especially when we feel overwhelmed and exhausted we've just got to take care of what's right in front of us and that step two of defining the exact area that you feel stuck in is critical because then you're just taking care of what's right in front of you in that space not at all of the spaces and in all of the journeys that you're walking in right now so shift the narrative identify exactly where you feel stuck and then make some decisions around what you can do to shift that particular space and shift the trajectory of that particular context and scenario that you might be in. I just want to emphasize right now, as we say in the middle, we, we need to do the middle with our tribe. We need to navigate the middle with our tribe. When we talk about a tribe, we define a tribe as the group of people who are committed to you realizing your potential, who know your gifts, know your talents, know your skills. Um, especially going back to the mental health conversation, it's so critical, critical that we don't isolate ourselves when we are feeling the sense of stuckness. Um, this is a, a great opportunity for you to connect with your tribe and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. It's to do with a specific area. Uh, and I'm just looking for some input. What are your thoughts? You know, what are some of the ideas that you might have for me around the next steps that I can take? Um, connect with people, reach out to people, have the conversations because sometimes the perspective of others is so helpful, especially because they're coming from a, a neutral place where they're not emotionally attached to what you're going through. And often people can see something that you can't see because you're wrapped up in some of the negative emotions that you're experiencing right now. So reach out to your tribe, connect with them, ask them the questions. So feeling stuck, first thing, let's change the narrative. This is an opportunity to shift the trajectory to even potentially open up new possibilities. Uh, I think sometimes we hold on too tightly to our expectations and to how we want life to pan out. Um, but as we say in the middle, it may be time for you to embrace the detour. And the second thing, let's get the actual sense of stuckness defined. Put that down on paper and find the specific area and don't label your whole life as being stuck. And then the third thing is, what do you intentionally do to shift trajectory in that exact space? And of course, to make sure that you're engaging with your tribe around this and not doing life in isolation. As we say in the middle, we as human beings are designed for tough terrain. Tough terrain is going to come. 
Um, these are just some practical things that you can deploy when you're navigating that tough terrain. But remember that even in, in doing that, you're essentially maturing and developing what I, what I term middle intelligence. And as you navigate this, know that it's going to come up again down the line. But by, by navigating it well now, you're learning how to navigate it um, when you get there. And of course, then also supporting other people through the middle as well. So keep going. You've got this. You have the ability to move out of the sense of stuckness. And the days ahead of you are still there to leverage um, and to work towards significant goals.